Welcome to our live stream. I'm here today with art prof teaching artist Deep D Menon. And today we are going to be doing a movie art critique. We're going to critique a painting of Cher's mother. Cher is played by Alicia Silverstone. So let us know in the chat if you guys have seen Clueless and what you think about that movie. It's on Netflix right now. Very easy to watch if you've got Netflix. If you would like to grow as an artist and you can't afford an art class, we've got everything you need here at Art Prof, critiques and tutorials. Deep D, let's talk about the movie Clueless. So those of you who haven't seen it before, maybe we can entice you into watching it on Netflix. Mm -hmm. Netflix, uh, Clueless really uh, revolves around Cher, who is played by Alicia Silverstone. So Deep Deep, how would you describe Cher as a character? So Cher is definitely the alpha popular girl at school. She's very beautiful, um, has a lot of friends and also has a lot of um, social power in school. But on top of that, she's also very driven, um, gets really good grades in school and has a very like, um, she has a vision for how she wants her life to go. Um, but she, you know, she gets good grades. She cares about how she looks. She's kind of just like a type A person, I would say. Um, yeah. Well, you know what's really cool about this movie that I don't think a lot of people realize is that it's actually very loosely based on Jane Austen's novel, Emma. And mm. if you guys were watching movies in the 90s, this was before Gwyneth Paltrow started running her goop empire. <laughs> Gwyneth Paltrow used to be in Hollywood movies. And so she was in this film called Emma, which is basically the same plot where Emma plays Cupid. And so here she is shooting an arrow and trying to get all her friends together and everything. So it's sort of <laughs> funny that Clueless is actually a contemporary version of Emma. So what does Cher do with this new girl, Ty, who arrives at yeah. the school? Of so apart from Cher, Cher is like very ambitious and I think she always likes to have a project um, happening. So this new girl, Ty, comes to school. Um, she's from New York, which is very different than their Beverly Hills lifestyle. And Cher takes Ty on as a project basically and wants to make Ty in her opinion, more visually appealing and also get her, find her some love. Um, so both Cher and Dion, who is the, her best friend, played by Stacey Dash, um, basically adopt Ty into their friend circle and teach them, teach Ty everything they know about um, being a girl, which I think is like very outdated and is clearly a remnant of its time. And I have my own opinions about that, but um, you know, they give her a makeover, give her a, a teacher how to do makeup, give her a new outfit, um, give her social skills, yada, yada. And then there is Cher's ex stepbrother, Josh, mm -hmm. who is played by Paul Rudd. And I've always thought this was the creepiest relationship. Like who is gonna, fall in love with their ex brother. I have so many questions about who wrote this and why they could not have just made this character her father's intern because essentially this is her ex brother, but he come he comes over to spend like this time with their their father because um he's working for the father and he's like literally in most of the scenes working with the father out of their home office. And so he easily could have been just like an intern who's staying with the family in their mansion, yada, yada. But he's her ex stepbrother. And the whole twist is that while she's trying to find Ty love, she ends up realizing that she's in love with her stepbrother. And it's totally normal, apparently. And then they end up being together. So weird, I think so. But apparently the creators of the film and everyone involved did not think so. <laughs> so open to interpretation. I don't know how they managed to do that. I mean, it was the 90s, maybe. <laughs> the 90s, yeah, maybe. I don't know. I, I feel like it's, it's interesting. It's very, very interesting. <laughs> well, so the other thing to know about Josh is that in the eyes of Cher, he's a total dweeb. Like he yeah. cares about current events. He really wants to be a lawyer. And he's like that 
dorky guy who's responsible. He's the designated driver and she makes fun of him the whole time. But of course, in the end, she realizes how awesome he is. <laughs> yeah, and I think he like cares for her in this way that nobody else seems to be caring for her. Like she gets, you know, guys are not nice to her. Her dad is too occupied with work. She, her mother has passed away. Her friends kind of aren't the best in some ways. So the stepbrother is, you know, the person that saves her after a bad night out and listens to her and thinks she's funny and sees her past all of these like accomplishments that she tries to do to be the perfect daughter and um, sees her for who she really is. <laughs> we have a comment from Katie. She says, Cher gets her grades altered to ensure that she pleases her dad. And her dad is actually very proud of her because he says, Cher, did you argue your way into getting a better grade or something like that? And so he's like so excited because he's a litigator and really into making arguments. And it's a, it's a great character study in terms of getting their relationship across. I forgot about that. I forgot that she like argues her grades. Like, you know, I think at one point she was like, I got a B, but like only for now. Or like she says something where she like presents her grades and she's like, but just wait, you know, <laughs> I'm about to get this to be higher. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about the scene where the painting of Cher's mother appears. So here's where we enter the scene that shows her Beverly Hills mansion, which mm -hmm. is big, right? I mean, you got a little stone sculpture in front. You got to be pretty well. <laughs> House, in my opinion, I've seen better. <laughs> and what I think is cool about the painting that we see right after you see the exterior of the mansion, I feel like in a lot of ways, the painting of Cher's mom really is an introduction to Cher's lifestyle and how rich her family is because you see this big mansion. Because the thing about portrait paintings in today's world people don't usually get portrait paintings commissioned. Like Deep Dee, what's your idea of a person who commissions a portrait today? Definitely someone who has money um, and, and one of this scale. Like I've definitely had friends ask me if I can draw a portrait of their mom for a birthday card or, you know, like something low key, but this is clearly a very time consuming large portrait and people who have this, I think it's a status symbol to be like, you know what, this is an out, like kind of an outdated thing to ask for, but I have the resources and I can afford whatever this costs. And it's also kind of, that's a huge portrait. You know, Like you, you having that big of an image of you or your mom or like someone you care about in your house is like a very like, look at me and i mean like that, that goes to show like we don't know if it was commissioned when it was commissioned post her death or whatever but um definitely a status thing um because why not take a photo we've got a comment from mr robot they are quoting the movie that the columns on Cher's mansion date back to 1972. wow you have definitely watched this movie more than once mr robot <laughs> That's yeah, so chime in, guys. If there's any little pieces of trivia that you want to contribute to the stream, that would be great to hear. Because you know something? I think, actually, in the context of the movie, this, to me, really feels like a brilliant character move. Because she also says that, oh, my mother's dead. She died from liposuction. <laughs> I shouldn't laugh about somebody dying, but it's just so tongue-in-cheek. I just think it's a great way to establish her life, right? The details are very on point, you know, like you can, you already, I think from the portrait, you can kind of tell a lot from like her, who her mom was, um, but just the small details of like how she died and that all, it's just, it's so, yeah, like you said, it's so tongue in cheek. <laughs> but you know something, there's actually some art history references embedded in here. There's quite a few, like for example, I totally thought of Vermeer when I saw that drapery in the upper left-hand corner, because this is very common Vermeer play where he has a very beautiful, intimate scene and you have this drapery that reveals what's happening. It's like a really beautiful moment. I mean, the painting's a little different <laughs> than Vermeer, but I mean, I, I think it's fun to see where things do cross over in terms of history, because this is not the same painting at all. 
I mean, if anything, I would say this painting is so tacky. Like, it's just, oh my God, it makes me squirm as an oil painter. I don't know. What do you think? It's, I, like, I, like, hate it and love it at the same time. I think it's so bizarre. And as, like, because as a filmmaker and whatever, I, I just think the intent behind the painting, like, let, um, not thinking about it technically or whatever, but the intent behind it, um, and especially because it's like a funny movie, I'm like, I wonder if they wanted this painting to just be like, kind of like atrocious <laughs> um, and huge and whatever. But um, yeah, it reminds me of the Vermeer painting because of the drapery. Also just like the details in the background, like the um, stenciling on the wall. It's, it's interesting because it has all these elements of like really old European, like you don't see drapery like that in people's houses anymore. And like the stenciling on the right side of the background, like, but then she looks like Farrah Fawcett and is wearing this very modern dress. So it's like bridging all of these like very, very strange. But then I'm like, I think it's tongue in cheek. Like the movie is so funny and like, so I think it is like, it's not self-aware but it is self-aware too in a lot of ways that I'm like, maybe as I'm saying all this, I'm like, maybe they're hyper aware of like all the nonsense that this painting represents. <laughs> well, you know something? I usually roll my eyes at teen movies. I usually mm -hmm. can't stand them, but this is a good movie. Like it honestly, you really do feel empathy for Cher as shallow and as annoying she is. I don't know. They really do a good job of building up her character. We've got some comments in the chat. Alice DB is saying, right, the hair is like the burst of the toilet brush. <laughs> well, but you're right. It definitely is a painting that was made in the 80s. You know, like, <laughs> like the hairdo is just so precious. And Mr. Robot is saying she's like a full on Monet. <laughs> and we also have another comment. Elm1230 says, and how she resembles Alicia vaguely. Do you mm -hmm. think they thought about that? Probably, since she she wasn't actually like cast, I wonder who the painting was based upon. You know, they probably either picked an actor who looks a lot like Alicia or maybe created this face based on, I do think, like they have the same mouth, you know, the lips, I, I see that very similar and that's interesting. I didn't think of that because you don't see the mom at all. Like you don't see a photo or anything. No, you never get that reference, which yeah. is kind of interesting because then you really interpret her solely through the painting. Mm -hmm. So W315 says those old master touches are supposed to make her look not nouveau. <laughs> this is great. So anyway, let's take a look at some other references because actually the Vermeer reference is not the only one. And actually, before we do that, let's talk about this movie crit that Jordan and I did a long time ago. And if you have not seen this movie, this is from Spider-Man 3. So this is where Harry, who is the Green Goblin, sees a portrait of his dead father, which actually is like the same thing <laughs> as what Cher is doing, which is looking at a portrait of a dead parent. Mm -hmm. And, you know, obviously Harry's not the same as Cher, but it goes back to what you were saying earlier, Deepti, which is who commissioned this portrait? Was it before her mother died? Was it after her mother died to commemorate her? I don't know, what's your theory on that? I, I assume that it was made after the mother died because of the way that like Cher walks in and like, it, it's almost like a, like a, like she talks to the portrait, like she's like, look, mom, I got a A in geometry again. Or like, you know, and so it seems like this like lasting memory that maybe they made and, and she's so glam and beautiful in it. It's like in her prime, you know? But then it does make a difference because I feel like if she sat for that portrait, um, the subject, like she would have had a say in how she is portrayed. So that kind of changes like, how you see this person it's like through their own eyes kind of but then if it was made post death it's how her husband or like Cher um saw her which totally changes things like i think about if i had someone paint my portrait what i would look like in that portrait versus if my parents had someone paint my portrait it would be two completely different portraits <laughs> um so it's interesting to think of like what this says about the person because it is very subjective to who asked for it to be done and who was present when it was being done. That's such a good point because 
the person that commissions the portrait has so much say into stylistic choices, in terms of the position of the figure, because I did a lot of portrait commissions way early on when I had just got out of art school. Mm -hmm. And you know what's really weird is that people have such different perceptions of what they actually look like. I'm yeah. like, dude, have you looked in the mirror? You don't look like that. Like, <laughs> like people think they look a certain way that has nothing to do with what they really look like. I mean, I sort of suspect her mom did commission this before really? she died. Well, I don't know because the father is so totally- That's true. Cold and I sort of feel like he wouldn't care what the painting looked like and mm -hmm. he would just be like, oh, as long as it looks like her, mm -hmm. who cares? Whereas like, I feel like this portrait is a very idealized version. And I feel like her mom is the type who would maybe feel that way about herself. I don't know. Yeah, and I think like even the pose and the gaze have so much like, it says so much about this woman that she's sitting back like this and like smiling at you, but kind of in this judgmental, like, you know, she's not gonna give you too much happiness. Um, that doesn't really feel like, at least in my opinion, doesn't feel like how so, like a loving husband or a loving daughter would portray their parent. Parent, maybe who knows? I mean, she did does seem like a very glam person, but the pose and everything is very like I'm in charge. I'm like very. This is my house. You know, <laughs> you're walking in right through the door and you see me. Uh, <laughs> it's like take off your shoes, but. Um, yeah, so maybe you're right. I think you have changed my opinion. I think actually, as I'm realizing, like even her hair, I'm like, I wonder if she just did her hair like that for the portrait and she's like never worn this hairstyle ever before. Like there it poses so many interesting questions. <laughs> People are so sensitive about their hair when you paint a portrait. Oh my God, like all the conversations I had with clients about how to wear their hair. Do I wear it down? Do I have it in a bun? Do I, oh my gosh, like you would not believe how much people associate their identity with how their hair is presented. So I think you're right. I think she like just had them curled and then like sat down for the portrait just to make sure the hair was like just right, you know? I, it's kind of like school picture day, you know, like you go to school picture day looking the best version of yourself and maybe your hair is in a style that you have never worn it before, but you're like, might as well try it out. It's like a little time capsule. Or like, for me, it's like, I, I act now. And I, when I go to auditions, I have to present like my best version of myself. Like I do not look like this, <laughs> you know? Um, but then I like look back on the tape if I have access and I'm like, wow, I look like, 1% of my life I look like that, 99% of the time. But that's how I want to be perceived. Like the amount of eyes that are gonna be on that versus the amount of eyes that are gonna be me sitting on my couch reading a book, totally different. So, yeah. All right, let's take a look at John Singer Sargent because I think it's really hard to talk about society portraits that are about, look how rich and powerful I am without looking at John Singer Sargent because he really was the quintessential society portrait painter. Mm -hmm. His technique's a little better than the mm -hmm. technique <laughs> shares mom's portrait. I mean, I look at John Singer Sargent's paintings and I just, I want to eat them. Like they look so luscious and beautiful. And I don't know, like the brushwork just makes you want to drool. Mm -hmm. And you know what's funny is this painting, which is Lady Agnew, I feel like it's the exact same outfit <laughs> as what Cher's mom is wearing. What do you think? It's very similar. It has the like frilly top. I think even the gaze and the tight lipped smile is very similar as well. But yeah, it's interesting. Like I think um, the singer sergeant piece has the texture and the like quality of the material I think comes through in a better way because of his mark making and his way of incorporating colors that aren't just white into the piece. Um, in Cher's mom's portrait, the fabric looks very stiff. Um, and I think that's not really what the fabric is. It seems like a very flowy, maybe cotton, like thinner material. Um, but I think that has to do with a lack of like color. Like she's surrounded in such a colorful room. In a normal lighting situation, it would reflect some of those warmer, cooler tones that are surrounding her. But 
um, yeah, the singer sergeant, like you said, it's like, I can feel that dress, you know, like I've worn a dress like that. I know what that feels like. It's so soft and fluffy, but kind of itchy and uncomfortable. Um, and with Cher's mom, it's like, I'm not really getting that intense tactile understanding of the fabric. I mean, I will say fabric is really hard to paint. Mm -hmm. Tell me in the chat, or even just to draw, tell me in the chat if you have trouble painting clothing or drapery, because what I think is hard about it, there are some parts of drapery that look stiff and a little tense, like, you know, when things get sort of wrinkled and, and crunchy looking, mm -hmm. but then there's definitely fabrics. Like if we go back and look at the full image, I mean, that dress is so big and full. And then there's this beautiful sheen across it. There's so many challenges mm -hmm. to getting the surface, the texture, the color. And then you know what I love about this portrait? Don't you think it's amazing that you can see the upper arm on oh the right God. side through? Yeah. Like that transparency is gorgeous. Mm -hmm. And so, okay, it's a little unfair to compare Cher's mom's painting to Sargent. <laughs> it's just, so amazing to see those differences because yeah. it is very hard to do. It's not an easy thing to pull off. Not at all. We've got some comments in the chat. Annie Williams is saying, I think the mom portrait shows a generational contrast to the teens in the movie. Wow, that's a really cool idea. What do you think about that, Deep Dee? That's really interesting. Yeah, because this mo the movie itself is such a fashion iconic what am I saying? It's very iconic in, in 90s fashion. Um, like Cher's outfits are like, to this day, people talk about. Um, so it's that's super interesting because it's true. Her mom is representing a lot of cliches or like iconic um, fashion statement-y things about like, I guess the 70s? I don't really know, the 70s, 80s? Um, so that's cool. It, it shows a generational difference, but also the fact that she is so hip with it, the mom um, kind of shows, did I just say hip with it? Who am I? Um, <laughs> I grandma, so I'm not, the fact that she's so like, you know, like in with the style of her time kind of makes sense because Cher is too, you know? And then that translates to Cher giving Ty this makeover. We've got a more accurate theory on the fashion DP. Blue Wolf Spirit says for that time, late 70s, early 80s, when she died, that was very stylish. Yeah, yeah there's that no- That hair gives it away. <laughs> there's no denying that the mom was like, cool. You know, like she gives off socialite vibes. Like she was definitely the person who like wore the dress and everyone was like, where did you get that dress? And we also have another comment from Jade Leaf. They're saying, I feel like the portrait of the mom makes it seem as if she were the from the cast of Dynasty. <laughs> Do you even know what Dynasty is, DT? I, I think, no, I feel like I have a, but I feel like I understand what you're saying. <laughs> Old movie from, a, not movie, TV show from a ways back. No. Oh. And Alice DB is saying fabric is very tricky because we do not focus enough on practicing it. Mm -hmm. And Johnny is saying, yes, difficult to make fabric look natural and soft. Mm -hmm. Very difficult. I love painting drapery. Everybody thinks I'm insane because it's hard to do, but I don't know, I like the challenge, I suppose. <laughs> All right, if you guys need some tips on oil painting, we've got you covered here at Art Prof. Check out my oil painting tutorial. And let's get into another reference, which is this movie, Art Critique, again, about a commissioned portrait. But this one's very different. It's from Portrait of a Lady on Fire, and it's set hundreds of years ago. And so it's a very mm -hmm. different time period. But Deep Deep, don't you think it's funny that the pose is so similar? It's almost the same gesture as Cher's mom. Yeah, it is. But actually what I thought about is it's so similar, but I think there's enough subtlety to show, uh, in my opinion, I'm interpreting, I haven't seen this movie, but I feel like this woman doesn't really want to be painted. Like she seems like a little like, um, like her body language is such that she like doesn't, like she's not exposing herself. And then Cher's mom, she's very, I feel like she's very much like, exposing herself. Like it's the same relaxed arm you know, what I'm doing right now. But in this way, she feels very like stiff and kind of like, okay, let's get this over with. Whereas Jerry's mom, I think she's like, this is cool. Let's do this for hours. Well, that's so funny that you say that, Deep Deep, because that's the whole plot of this movie 
is oh that God. the woman doesn't want to be painted. 10 points for Deep D. <laughs> that is incredible. I can't believe that you guessed that just from looking at the painting. Well, I guess they did a good job or I'm just- They did. Having, you know, psychic abilities, who knows? <laughs> that helps too, right? <laughs> well, so another portrait artist who's more contemporary is Alex Katz. And I think for a lot of people, they associate more realistic oil painting style for a society portrait. And Alex Katz is the total opposite. If you look mm -hmm. at his portrait paintings, they're really flat, super graphic. There's almost no shading, very, very little detail. But in some ways, I feel like Alex Katz's style would have fit better for Cher's mom. What do you think? Yeah, I think so too. I think what I noticed with Cher's mom's portrait kind of immediately was that it was living a little bit for me in the uncanny valley of like, looking like a person and like being very realistic and like like similar to a photograph in some senses but it wasn't really like anatomically correct and there was a lot of like flatness in it and so for me I was like I feel like this portrait should just be pushed one way or the other it should be more like Singer Sargent where it's like very very accurate and anatomically and the skin is like very lush or like this where it's like very like graphic. Um, and I honestly kind of like these better. Like I said, it has more of a modern metropolitan woman take to it. Um, and the lighting is interesting. I like the kind of like strange skin tone. I mean, I'm wearing blue light glasses, but yeah. Like they're kind of like yellowy in, in their skin tone. Like everything is like, you know it's a person, but everything is a little off and a little strange. But I love that. I think it causes, creates intrigue. And I feel like Cher's mom's portrait leans a little bit more towards this aesthetic. And I think it could be pushed a lot more. Um, that could be really cool. Well, you know, I think it is the distortion and the Alex Katz portraits, they seem very intentional. It doesn't yeah. seem like I'm trying to paint it realistically, but I don't have the skill set to really nail it. And I feel like this portrait it's such a weird upper torso. I mean, it's mm -hmm. too long, it's too straight and too simple, but it really works for the atmosphere and tone of the image, like that single strap yeah. hanging down the back, I think is really, says a lot about the person in the portrait. And it's interesting because I feel like these flat backgrounds are generally not what I would recommend, but it works kind of well here. Like, I don't know. it. I'm kind of into these just like flat colored backgrounds. I can't even explain why, but I feel like it works. I'm like, I don't think you need to add anything else there. <laughs> so tell us in the chat, if you guys think an Alex Katz style or John Singer Sargent style would be a better fit <laughs> for Cher's mom, because I do get the feeling deep deep. Mm -hmm. If I go back and we look at Cher's mom, it's like, dude, pick a style. Like, are you gonna go full out realistic or just really run with the awkwardness of the shapes? Like I actually find the background here really dull and a little bit jumbled because it's mm -hmm. like, you've got the draper, you've got the blue stripes, you've got the decoration on the right. And I sort of really like the Alex Katz version of just straight yellow. What do you yeah. think? I kind of agree. I feel like there's like a lot going on in this piece, which also I'm like, is this tongue in cheek? Is this like a joke? They were like, let's throw in all the cliches as possible in this, like given the fluffy pillows and everything. But I kind of agree. I feel like just something a little bit simpler that just focused on the glam of this woman. Um, maybe that's what it is in the Alex Katz. Like it's so much, it's, it has nothing to do with the environment. It's like so much just about this person and how glam and in charge they are. Um, maybe that would have worked more or better. You know what I think is interesting too, is a lot of people associate the effectiveness of a portrait on likeness. So, oh, does it look like the person? And sure, that's definitely part of it, but I actually feel like the props, the clothing, the background, say more about the person than the face mm -hmm. does. Because if you look at this Alex Katz portrait, the face isn't anything to write home about. I mean, it's stereotypical, just face with red lipstick. But then it's like, look at what happens wearing that red coat, the red hat. And then this woman here 
in the next slide, the sunglasses, the gigantic hat. Like, I feel like I know her, the but pearls. I can't even see half her face. Yeah, and her pearls, it's like hidden, but it's there. I feel like a pearl necklace is so indicative of someone's status. Right, and it's such a small detail. Like, mm -hmm. Alex Cap totally could have left that out, but I feel like it's an important thing to look at. We have a couple comments. W315 says, Hockney would be a better fit for Cher's mom. What do you think about that, Deepi? That's a cool theory. That is a cool theory. I, I, yeah, I don't know. That I, I think that would be cool. I feel like it has more of a distinct style for sure than Cher's mom, which I think is just like floating in this weirdness. So yeah. <laughs> we have another comment from Tony. They're saying, I'm surprised you like the one color background there since you always talk about background being dull if it's only one color or nothing in it. That is true. I definitely am one of those people. I'm always hounding you guys about, you didn't do the background, it's too flat. And so is this hypocritical for me to say, hey, it works really well. It's everything I always tell you guys to never do. <laughs> I, know, that's why I was confused because I also feel the same way, but this is everything I also say won't work. Like even her hat, like the composition, I was like, there's so many like little tangents, like it's barely off the canvas. Like there's so many things, but I'm like, it works for some reason. I'm like not mad about how the hat is like just off the edges, like strange. I don't know what it is. You know what I think it is, Tony? I think it comes down to intention because a lot of the times when I see empty backgrounds or backgrounds that are just one flat color, it does feel very much like people are like, oh, I gotta put something there, let's color it in. But the thing is, if you look at this cat's portrait, if you take away that background, the whole piece falls apart. Because mm -hmm. Deepti, don't you think that bright saturated yellow does a lot for her personality? Totally, I mean, if you, like, if you don't have that background, she almost looks like she's maybe going to a funeral um, and it changes everything, or she's like a celebrity who doesn't wanna get well, actually, I think without the background, it's very funeral-esque, but with the background, it seems more like celebrity status. Like, I'm hiding myself, but I still, you know, want to kind of, you know, like the smirk and everything, but it adds to that. Whereas if it was just a white background, I think I would think that she was like going to a funeral or going to go just sign her divorce papers or, you know, something not really very happy. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, the way I would put it, Tony, is that, I don't believe that there's a one size fits all approach. There's no, this is always good. This is always bad. It's just a lot of the work that we tend to critique. A lot of it is people who are students. People are just getting started. I mean, we don't critique Alex Katz. Alex Katz does not submit his work to be critiqued by us. So it's a very different population that we're working with. But I think that what's important to think about is, well, what is the intent of the piece? Is this artist doing it because they were too lazy to think about it? And it's hard to define all the time exactly what that is, but I think definitely something to think about. Mm. Let's see, we've got some more comments in the chat. Annie Williams is saying, I think the style of the painting itself reveals perhaps the character trait of the mom. I think the mom probably chose the artist to paint it may have been involved in the painting of the picture. That's another thing is picking the artist mm -hmm. to do your portrait. That's a whole thing in itself. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if you guys saw the stickers that Deep D <laughs> did of the art, but it's like, that was so great for a sticker. But it's like, if you commissioned me to make stickers, <laughs> they would have been terrible. You know, so like, don't you think that choice of the artist is so important, Deep D? Totally. Like you wouldn't have, nobody would ever commission me to make a portrait of them and not know that it's going to be kind of like a joke because I can't make things that don't look funny because I'm just like a sarcastic person and it comes out in my art making, you know, but like commissioning you, Claire, I, I think it'll be like a beautiful piece that really like represents that. Mine is more like, you know, the artist's take on this person. So it definitely like comes down to your personal style and who the person is and like, I think about portrait painting, like you're probably sitting there interacting with that person too for a while. So it becomes more of like a human thing. Like, do you want this person staring at you for hours? Like, are you gonna be able to make conversation with them? 
or do you not want that? So yeah, I guess past portfolio, it kind of has to do with your people skills too. <laughs> well, and I will say when you work with somebody on a major portrait commission, you get to know them. Mm -hmm. I mean, I did a commission for this family. They lived in this huge mansion. I mean, their kitchen was like bigger than my house. <laughs> and I got to know every facet of their lives because mm -hmm. I would spend time at their house. I would talk to them and we'd have all these interactions. And so it's actually a very intimate portrait experience. I think people don't realize how much goes into that. It's not as clinical as you might imagine. Yeah. We have an art prof share today. Art prof share is when one of you guys creates an artwork in response to one of our tutorials. And you know what's really cool this time? Usually the art prof share is a single artist, but this time around, it's actually the Pavilion Art Group, which is a group in Cambridge in the United Kingdom. And so they're talking about how they're trying to think about ways to collaborate as a group during the lockdown because of course they couldn't meet in person and so they followed the lotus fold tutorial that caffrey and i made which check it out it's a really fun easy technique and you can get really really cool results from it and so they created these sculptural sketchbooks that could be further added to by individual members a real collaboration and so the meandering fold which is a second technique in that tutorial worked really well for transforming an old painting, a brilliant exercise for revamping old work and keeping what they created deliciously fluid. So what do you think about this, Deep D? Like taking the tutorial and making it such a collaborative experience. I love it. What a way to like use an idea and make it your own. I think it's so, like I love seeing how people are making collaborative pieces during um, the pandemic and like, the, I don't know how to make this Lotus Fold thing, but it makes so much sense visually that it would be a collaborative piece and it's so tactile, but it's, it's I don't know, I, I, I really applaud them for finding ways to take an idea that we've presented and um, remix it to make it their own. But what a genius way to like, make, it's so collage-like um, and it makes so much sense with the folding um, mechanism that this Lotus thing gives you the opportunity to do. <laughs> I mean, what I think is so cool, guys, is, I mean, it's so cool when you guys watch our stuff, but to see you guys actually produce something so concrete and also to put your own take on it. I mean, in the tutorial, Caffrey and I just say, here's how you make it. And the fact that this pavilion art group went and created their own spin on the project is even better. And to me, that's just wonderful that we can be a starting place for you guys, but then you can really determine your own destination as a group. Yeah, so if like, you guys, go ahead. Sorry, I was like, this gives us ideas. Like this, I don't think watching the tutorial, I would have been like, oh, it's a collaborative effort. Like it's so easy to make this into a collaborative piece. But like now that you're sharing it with us, it's like, oh wow, this is so cool. We could like, you know, do you think of more projects collaboratively rather than just like, here's an idea for you yourself to just work on alone? I mean, maybe that's the silver lining in this really terrible situation that the world is in right now, that people are really having to figure out new ways to collaborate. And yeah. hopefully that stimulates some creative expression amongst us that we wouldn't normally be doing. If you guys have your own art prof share and you want to be considered for a shout out here on YouTube, just go to artprof.org, click on tutorials, and you will see a purple button and you will find the art prof share submission form to upload your information. But you don't have to do that. If you just want to show us, you can tag us on Instagram, use art prof share. And I oftentimes share these in our Instagram stories. So however you guys want to do it. I mean, like, Deepti, how does it feel when you see people making stuff from our content? Oh, it's awesome. I mean, it gives us so many ideas. It inspires me to be making more work. But, like, it's it's so cool to put an idea out there and then see, like, it having an impact and inspiring people on a global scale. So I don't think I've ever seen someone create something that and tag this in it that I haven't been like, what, this is amazing, like, look at I this. know, 
And you know what's funny, Deep D, is the bigger Art Prof grows, the more that we're seeing. I mean, now every day I open up Instagram, there's more and more submissions, but it never gets old. Like no. every time I see an Art Prof share, it's like Christmas morning. You're like, whoa, like it totally yeah. blows your mind every and people, time. People like, tag us on our personal Instagrams too and like message us on our personal Instagrams. And like, I don't know, it's, it's so heartening to see like that just this tiny idea that we all had so many years ago is like exciting people. And it's so cool that like, I need the stimulation and like the encouragement and then I get it from the community. And I'm like, what? Like, this is a two way street. How cool is that? <laughs> Absolutely. Deepti and I will be in the discord in a few minutes. We're gonna be in the channel called Post Live Stream. So if you wanna to come to our little after party, you're totally welcome. If you're not in the Discord, the invite link is in the video description below. Subscribe to our channel and join the Art Prof family. And thank you to our top Patreon supporters who make everything possible. Thank you to all of you guys who contributed clueless quotes and theories on portraiture and 70s hairdos. We greatly appreciate it. Everybody stay safe. We'll see you next time. Bye.